Although the 1949 Colgate football team lost to Syracuse by four touchdowns, they got off easy. Nobody tried to kidnap them. Such was life during the early days of the Colgate-Syracuse rivalry, a time when pep bands were able to abduct each other without lawyers having to get involved. Colgate football reached the lowest point in its nearly 60-year history during the 1949 season. An early win over the University of Buffalo stood as the lone positive during what ended up as a 1-8 campaign. But the passion and support of the Colgate community never once wavered. Game after game saw a following of students, alumni, and Hamiltonians that would have made any Notre Dame or Michigan team proud, and the 50th annual contest versus Syracuse saw a record of 36,000 fans pour into Syracuse's Archbold Stadium. Back in the days of leather helmets, only one game mattered for Colgate, the Hoodoo match versus the Saltine Warriors of Syracuse. Syracuse held an early edge in the series until a maroon sweater was placed under the bedrock of their newly constructed Archbold Stadium in 1907, and the hoodoo curse was born. The 49 squad was looking to claim their 31st victory in the series, yet they knew the task wouldn't come easily. Syracuse Week was celebrated with activities that ranged the spectrum of both legality and taste. Seven fraternities hosted theme parties designed to lure in lonely co-eds, ranging from Alpha Tau Omega's Hell on Earth to Delta Upsilon's speakeasy cocktail bash. A raucous pep rally was attended by the entire Shenango Valley. The marching band's trek down Willow Path to a raging bonfire was joined by the Hamilton Fire Department's Bugle Corps, and many on-campus organization held smokers featuring prominent alumni of the day. Various bits of mischief were planned by both sides as well. An orange raid attempt's transport ran out of gas in downtown Hamilton before five of its perpetrators were brutally shaved on Broad Street. Days later, the Syracuse marching band, in what a Colgate Maroon editorial would call a dark spot upon the rivalry, orchestrated the attempted kidnapping of the Colgate band, weary after their return trip from Chicago. Despite the Syracuse Anti-Vandalism Committee's November 9th ban on kidnapping, the Orangemen orchestrated an elaborate ruse only thwarted by an anonymous bus driver. While the plot unraveled for the Orangemen, four boys were taken to Syracuse and trudged back to Hamilton with the letter S shaved into their heads. The ensuing riot and property damage incensed the Colgate community. Our boys' hair will grow back quickly, the maroon fumed. Our opinion of Syracuse ethics may not. Revenge, as it turned out, was indeed served cold. Some Colgate men borrowed an ice cream truck, drove to Syracuse, and under the guise of frozen treats, proceeded to shave anyone they could get their hands on. Pamphlets were dropped by air upon each campus, including one on Hamilton advising Colgate fans to strike against Coach Bixler and avoid an orgy of annihilation at Archbold. Retaliation was apparently served when several Broad Street fraternities somehow were able to persuade a number of Cusin co-eds to pick Colgate to win the 50th encounter. Unfortunately, their support meant little in the end, as Syracuse went on to win 35-7. Regardless of the score, however, the Syracuse week of 1949 became a benchmark for the rivalry's lore, and in the words of the Maroon, had turned into Syracuse week and a half.